In the vast expanse of human anatomy, where every organ and gland has a tale waiting to be told, there lies a mystery shrouded in the fabrics of the female body, known as Skeen's gland. Today, we embark on a journey through the annals of medical history, anatomy, and the controversies that envelop this elusive entity. Join us as we unravel the secrets of Skeen's gland, an enigmatic part of the female anatomy that has puzzled scientists and doctors for centuries. Our story begins in the 19th century with Alexander Skeen, a physician with an insatiable curiosity for the human body. Skeen's discoveries would lay the groundwork for over a century of debate, fascination, and scientific inquiry. But what drove Skeen to these discoveries? And how has our understanding evolved since his time? Anatomy and relationship to the prostate. These glands are also known as lesser vestibular or pararethral glands. They are generally considered analogous to the prostate in men due to similarities in their structure and function, and a microscopic examination of their cells and tissues supports this connection. Researchers have found, for example, that the gland produces proteins such as prostate, specific antigen, which was previously known only to originate in the male organ. The main difference is that, while the prostate is almost always fully formed in men, this is not the case in the female equivalent. Some women have fairly large and well-developed Skeen's glands, but others have much smaller ones and still other women seem to lack them completely. It is believed that this wide variation might be why some women experience G-spot orgasms and ejaculation while others do not. During sexual arousal, the Skeen's gland becomes swollen with blood, stimulating nerve fibers associated with it. Ongoing stimulation of the area can produce an orgasm, but the nerve fibers are different from those in the clitoris. Many women report that orgasm associated with gland stimulation feels different from clitoral orgasm. The glands are believed to be the sole source of the fluid expelled during female ejaculation. They produce varying amounts of liquid, but generally no more than around zero. Five cup, about 118 ml at a time. It is thought that the gland produces a small amount of fluid throughout sexual arousal and that sometimes a larger quantity of fluid is released upon orgasm. Many women who experience this believe that they have accidentally expressed urine and some deliberately suppress their orgasms to prevent embarrassment. The fluid the skin's gland produces does not resemble urine at all. It's typically clear and does not have the same odor. It contains a mixture of blood plasma, proteins, and enzymes similar to that of prostate fluid. For this reason, and because of the anatomical similarities, many researchers and medical professionals have begun referring to the gland as the female prostate. Controversial issues historically. Some researchers have questioned whether the Skeen's glands actually exist, and those who did accept their existence still debate what roles they play in female arousal, orgasm, and ejaculation. Another question yet to be answered is whether it plays any part in sexual dysfunction in women. The controversy about the existence and function of the gland is similar to that which also surrounds the G-spot. Research studies have produced evidence both for and against the existence of this spot, which is said to be located inside the vagina, on the front wall. Women who report having G-spot orgasms tend to be more likely to also experience ejaculation. This suggests there might be a physical link between the G-spot and Skeen's gland, but overall the body of research is considered by many medical professionals to be inconclusive. Diseases healthy Skeen's glands generally cannot be felt or seen. Sometimes, the ducts can become blocked by infection, causing pain and tenderness. If the infection does not resolve on its own, an abscess can form within the duct or the gland itself. Not all abscesses require medical attention, but severe infection might require that the abscess be drained by a professional. The most common treatment for infection is a single dose or course of antibiotics, typically the same as those used to treat urinary tract infections. Very rarely, the gland can become cancerous. The type of cancer that develops is referred to as Skeen's gland adenocarcinoma, and it is very similar to prostate cancer in men. 
This disease is so rare that only a small handful of cases have been documented in medical literature, but surgery is typically an effective treatment providing the disease is detected early on.